What's up, everybody? Anthony here, SpecialtyMotorCars.net, and what you'll find behind me is a big, beautiful Cadillac. The last of an era, really. The 96 Cadillac Fleetwood Brome. The last of the big ones, the last of the Mohegans, the last big, traditional, body-on-frame, rear-wheel drive Cadillac right here behind me. Super excited to bring you this car. A 51, almost 52,000 mile example. Finished in a gorgeous color. Optioned out just how I like them. We'll get into it. Gonna do a full walk around video, tell you all about this car, price, everything, phone number, everything is gonna be in this video. So you'll see everything you need in this video if you watch this video and pay attention. Let's get into it. And here she is, a beautiful 1996 Cadillac Fleetwood Brome. The last year for these big rear wheel drive, traditional body on frame Cadillacs. And now the sun is starting to poke out. Come on. Been waiting for the sun, <laughs> sun to come out. Now it's getting dusk. Anyways, we're gonna get through this video. 1996 Cadillac Fleetwood Brome. It's a 52,000 mile, just about to hit 52,000 mile example that I have bought last November. Um, this car I bought from one of my YouTube subscribers from up northern New Hampshire. Um, if you remember the video, Matt and I went up and picked this car up and uh, drove this car back. And I originally intended for this car to be a quick in and out car. I wasn't going to marry this car and do a ton of stuff that it kind of needed cosmetic things. Uh, but I ended up marrying it. I got down on one knee and I said, let's do this thing. Um, and here we are all these months later. I'm finally ready to let this car go because I brought it up to my acceptable standards. Uh, I had a hard, a hard time letting it go otherwise. Uh, some of the things that this car needed was like the vinyl top. I did a brand new replacement top on this car. Um, all the rub strips. If you remember the video, you can go back to it. Put a link at the end of this video. Uh, kind of pointing out all that stuff that this car needed. Um, and I was reluctant to do it because I knew it was going to take time. And I was going to just, you know, do the mechanicals and then sell this car, you know, as it was. But I just did one thing and then I did another thing and then I did another thing. And end of the day, I am very happy with how this car came out. Um, if you don't know me by now, you should. I am not your typical buy today for sale tomorrow type guy, type dealer. Um, I go through these cars. I really want to do my best and put my best foot forward because I'm also an enthusiast. And the typical used car dealer would be, okay, let's get it done. Let's get it out the door. And I thought I could do it with this car, but I just couldn't. And I'm glad I stuck to my ways and really dialed this car in nicely because it stands real tall. Beautiful carmine red over a neutral leather interior. Uh, some, <clears throat> some of the cosmetic things that we did to this car, it all started nickeling and diming me, but that's, that's just what this business is about. And that's why most used car dealers don't get involved because they don't want to put the money into cars. Um, but... Ended up putting a brand new set of Vogue tires on it. It had Vogues, decent Vogues, but they were like 12 years old. They needed, to be, you know, they didn't need to, but they should have been replaced. So I did that. New Vogues. Uh, we also replaced the Spears. Uh, real common for these cars on all four corners. <coughs> Excuse me. That the original Spears, which are a plastic chrome foiled spear, shrinks over time. And when they shrink, they get this like wrinkly effect. Uh, so these are new replacement uh, polished steel spears. Look beautiful on the car. We also refinished the lower uh, gray strip all the way around the car. Did a real nice job at that. You can see the beautiful Fleetwood insignia. Beautiful red paint on this car. Uh, that, the previous dealer that sold my customer, well, my, the guy who sold me the car, um, they refinished that with the wrong color. It looked horrible. They dyed the top the wrong color. It looked horrible. Basically, my customer, I say my customer, the guy that I bought this car from, bought it from one of those typical, and I'm not shitting on Florida dealers, but those one of those Florida dealers that just 
buys it today, cleans it up the best they can, takes pictures in front of beautiful palm trees or in front of a big mansion on a paver driveway and just pawns it off to the next guy. Even he said when he got this car how disappointed he was because he paid all the money for the car sight unseen and the car was just kind of lipstick together. It's a really nice car, just they, they kind of, ugh. Like the rub strips on the bottom here, they painted in this blotchy silver, which was the wrong color. We did it in the correct metallic, uh, the charcoal metallic. The vinyl top was original and dry. And what they did was they, they patched little cracks in it and dyed it, but dyed it the wrong color. It was real blotchy. The paint was coming off or the dye was coming off. Uh, so I replaced the top, refinished the belt line molding here. Um, put fresh emblems on the car. We did a lot of stuff to this car. Uh, replaced this rear bumper impact strip. There was a corner missing off of it. Um, did that. Gave it a nice polish. Like I said, did these spears. Top came out really great. Correct tuxedo grain with the correct stitching. Uh, also replaced the windshield on this car. A few reasons why I did the windshield. One, it was delaminating. This was the original optional Sungate windshield that was in this car, PPG Sungate. Uh, but it's real common for those to start delaminating on the edges here. Uh, also on the driver's side in the line of vision, there was some scratches from the windshield wiper. So I elected to put a windshield in, in the car as well. Um, so windshield top was replaced. Vogue tires were replaced. Strips were um, refinished here. Uh, put a new old stock hood ornament on the car. If you remember the video uh, that I showed, the hood ornament was all pitted. Uh, the colors weren't nice and bright. This is a new old stock example. Shows really well. Uh, also replaced this mirror, the whole assembly. Uh, the glass was damaged. It wasn't staying in there. And then the paint was damaged on the top here. I believe it was already a replacement mirror. And then the paint that they put on it wasn't very good quality because the clear was... Uh, chipping off so we did a new mirror wiper blades stuff like that as far as the service i'll tell you all about the mechanicals that we did uh also all four windows very common for these um fleetwoods roadmasters these body gms uh there's two clips in each regulator that crack and break and fail ultimately causing the windows to come down crooked and fall into the doors um, all four windows were pad. So I pulled all the door panels, went through and replaced all those roller clips. So I really dialed this car in nicely. Also put some nice used emblems on the uh, C pillars, refinished these, brome emblems as well. All in all, dialed this car in as nice as I could make this car. And you know what? It stands so tall. I really hope the seller who sold me this car sees this video because I know he will really appreciate the amount of work uh, and he'll be able to see it. The amount of work that went into this car to really make this car stand tall. And I absolutely adore this color. You know me, I love burgundies and reds. Um, if I ordered one of these things brand new, this is the exact color that I would order this car in. 1996 being the last year. Beautiful paint on that car. Of these Fleetwoods, um, Last of the Mohegans, built at Arlington on the Arlington line, Arlington, Texas, that would then be swapped over to build my next great, you know, generation of car was the GMT 800. Well, they did the other, the Suburbans and stuff, the GMT 400s, but eventually the GMT 800 Escalades, Suburbans, and whatnot. Uh, so this car shows extremely, extremely well on the outside. It took me longer than I wanted. I put, I did more than I wanted to do, but I'm happy that I did what I did. So let's go around the car. I'm gonna point out just a few little minor chips and stuff like that. A couple little small stone chips on the leading edge of the hood there. One right there as well. Uh, but the impact strips are a nice shape. Like I said, all refinished. The chrome, the lights and lenses all show really well. Like I said, these are the new replacement spears. Nice polished, will never wrinkle again. Does have the headlamp monitors up on the tops of the fenders. Little chip that was touched up 
right there. You can see the beautiful red paint. Uh, beautiful chrome wheels. These chrome wheels were optional chrome wheels for the 93 to 96 Fleetwood Bromes only. Uh, it does have a few spots where you can see some corrosion in the pockets here. Kind of common with these new Vogue tires, but overall great shape. A little bit of stress kind of crazing in this uh, center cap piece. Mirror came out great. Thanks to my buddy Ryan over at Carriage Auto Body for that. And like I said, these came out absolutely wonderful too. You can see the gold or the chrome Fleetwood insignia. few little chips right there on the edge of the door or the door edge guard a couple little minor guys just you know real random little chips there chrome on the bottom I really wish they made these wheels standard on these cars because these cars look the balls with these wheels these wheels are kind of like the equivalent of your 90s or 80s and 90s bromes with the wire wheels like it's just that wheel set that puts the car over the edge. And it does it so well with this car because it has so much chrome on the bottom. Really, it ties it in so nicely. Uh, this is the replacement top I did. First time I ever did one. I'd say it came out pretty snazzy. A few little spots where you can see a little bit of wrinkling kind of here and there. But honestly, this is the first time the car has really been out. It's not really very warm out. But I think once this car sits out in the sun a little bit, it's going to tighten it up real nice. Uh, but this is the correct Carmine Red Tuxedo Grain Vinyl. Like I said, I replaced all the clips behind here. Real common for those to get real fragile. Obviously, when I pulled this off, they all broke. It does have tinted glass. One of the little molding bits that I couldn't do much with is you can see these two corners here uh, where the edges kind of chipped off. And then this piece here, a little section on the back door, but then the whole upper piece here is missing. You really don't notice it, and it's not a preventative to, you know, buffer something from water or wind. It's just to, right, like, finish off the molding here to hug the door. Um, real common for those to start to get a little brittle, and once they get caught on something, they rip right off, unfortunately. Um, so really it's just missing on that driver's door. A little section there you can see this beautiful paint i love 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 this color look at her glisten in the sun uh sold new at bayview cadillac i believe my guy who sold me this car was the second owner he bought the car back in 2012 13. um he didn't put very many miles on it It had in the upper 40s i want to say 47 48 000 miles i bought the car just under 51 with him I think I've put almost a thousand miles on this car. Paint shows real, real well on this thing. Got the Bayview Cadillac Insignia. Nice traditional stand-up taillights. A little bit of cracking, or I should say stress cracking, like the paint there. Some minor pitting in the chrome there. Replacement bu bumper rub strip is in great shape. Nice bright work chrome. It has the flip open Cadillac lock cover again same thing over here a little minor pitting in the bottom section of these tail light bezels as far as paint work on this car i do believe this quarter has been painted and i say that because you can see a small little spot there a little bit of clear coat chipping and then right here as well um but uh, the, the paint match is great. There's really, there's no color difference. Get out of here, mosquito. It looks really great. Chrome, all the chrome on the bottom of this car is in great shape. Again, spots of corrosion just in the pockets of the wheels there. A little bit of sun fade here and down on here. But doesn't stick out too, too crazy. All the strip is good there. A few little bug marks and spots on this mirror. 
But aside from that, really nice and clean. Coming down the side here. Beautiful, vibrant red paint. Oh, look at that sun is beating on me now. It's hiding behind the clouds now. It's out and about. You can see in a few spots on the top of this fender where there's a few dimples right back here. And then you'll see it right kind of in here with these two little stone chips. Uh, I believe that was from someone probably leaning over and kind of uh, elbowing on the top of the fender, creating those little bumps or dimples. Nice, beautiful, bright work. There is one spot right here. You can see a little delamination in this bumper filler. And a little stone chip right there, but ooh la 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 la. Look at that chrome, that beautiful Cadillac hood ornament. Absolutely gorgeous, 1996 Cadillac Fleetwood. Woo, she is, <laughs> she's causing a reflection now. Look at that. Uh, if you don't like red, this is not the car for you. Absolutely beautiful. 1996 Cadillac Fleetwood. Now let's take a look on the inside. All right, let's dive on to the inside of this 96 Fleetwood uh, and open her up, show you what a beautiful, beautiful, whoop, OCD's kicking in right there a little bit. What a beautiful leather interior this car has. Uh, interior of this car, is a neutral leather. Um, that's actually the name of it. It's kind of like a, like the later Cadillacs called shale, kind of like that light beige color. Uh, but a real, real clean interior uh, on this Fleetwood. Show you inside the door jams. Clean, no rust. Usually a typical spot you start to see these cars rusting is down in here in the threshold. Uh, both forward and behind this plastic panel. Uh, but this being a Florida car, uh, this car is real, real clean. And even the gasketing, all the, the window gaskets, door gaskets are nice and soft on the inside here. Uh, do driver's door panel shows really nice. Get the pull handle here, power door locks, uh, power driver seat, power passenger seat. But the Brome package cars came with a two-way um, memory seat function, power windows. You have obviously your mirror controls, a uh, dash pad on this car, beautiful shape, no cracks or anything like that. Real common to get cracks in these dash pads when these cars lay out in the sun. Automatic headlights, beautiful leather wrapped wheel, real, real clean leather wrapped wheel, no abnormal wear. Um, you can actually still feel the grain in the leather. Obviously, you can feel the stitching. Uh, driver's seat shows well. Great, really. Um, you know, minimal creasing. These cars do have a natural kind of pillowy, extra padding look to it. Um, you know, it's not like it's supposed to be tight like that. It is supposed to be kind of fluff like this. Uh, very typical to see these Fleetwoods kind of start to show wear around here from people sliding in and out. You have a heated seat, the driver's side heated seat I do know works. Um, all the A pillar, or B pillar I should say, is in nice shape. Looks like it might have been recovered at one point. I believe these have articulating headrests in the front. 96 was the only year I believe for this big center console. A traditional flopping opening clamshell console. Carpeting shows real nice. Another weak spot is these panels here. Usually you see these cars, this panel is missing. Um, there's a lot of, you know, little things that these cars can break or lose to start to show, you know, lack of love. Not really lack of love, it's just natural happens to these cars. Um, but this one shows real well. All inside the jams, again, pull handles. You have uh, rear ashtrays, cigarette lighters, never been used, all your power windows. Again, all inside the door jams, nice and clean. Get you 
AC back pockets, perfect spot to hide a dealer plate. And the carpeting is in great shape. The back seat of these cars, I love my 1992 Brums, but the back seat of these cars are like ultimate couch luxury, just spacious, plush, and no headrest needed. I mean, you just get this giant, kind of almost a wraparound like sofa back seat. Uh, big center console. This guy folds out. You can hide little things in here. You got two levels, two cup holders in the back there. Uh, rear shelf. You do have the rear taillight monitors. You can see those snake eyes looking at you there. Shoulder belts. One thing I do like about these Fleetwoods is they got the center lap belt is retractable where most cars aren't. So they just kind of like flop all over the place. I think that is cool because it looks nice and tidy you know it, it doesn't look sloppy and that that's like one of my pet peeves is when people take pictures of cars and they're just like you know all clustered and hanging up all over the place but the back seat on this car beautiful beautiful shape and inside those jams nice and clean rust free go around the passenger side here And all inside that door jam. Nice and clean. No rust, no corrosion, no bubbling. That's how we like it in these Florida cars. Rear door panel, again, shows nice. You get courtesy lights underneath that little kind of ledge. Reflectors in the back. When you pop these open, you have dual cigarette lighters in the back. And there's that big wraparound back seat. Carpeting shows real nice. If you jump in the back here, oh, we do have dual adjustable vanity mirrors. Uh, actually, the same style mirror as in like the town car out long bodies are these same style mirrors. So the same manufacturer must have manufactured them for the long wheelbase town cars. Get yeah, nice and clean. No rust, no corrosion. Nice soft, pliable weather stripping. Passenger side door panel again. Dual power seats, you get your bottom tilt. Now, and that's another difference between the Fleetwoods and the Broms. Uh, the, Brom, uh, the, the Broms come with that split tilting front bench uh, with the lumbar, the recliner over here and the heat, where the base Fleetwoods don't. And then the pleating in the Fleetwoods go um, across the car where the seat pleating in these Brome package cars um, go from front to back, essentially. Uh, but real nice leather in this car. Nice, soft, supple leather. Again, articulating rear uh, front headrests. You have the opening center console with your little flip out cup holder. Kind of a big, giant dashboard over here. Nothing really going on other than your Cadillac and your Brome insignia. But over that big dash pad, again, no cracks, no splits. Usually they start right up around that vent and they go over to the airbag and they come from the airbag corners and down. Nice to have it not all beat up. Still plates are in nice shape. And again, the edges of the seats, real great right there. All right, let's jump behind the wheel. All right, we're behind the wheel of the Fleetwood. Now I get to show you what I got for books and keys. Uh, in this case, I do have one GM set of silver keys uh, with the VATS key. You can see the VATS chip there. And then the remote, and the remote works. You got lock and unlock. Oh, don't want to lock us in. Um, this is kind of cool. It has interior lights. That'll turn the interior lights on. And then your trunk, pop open your trunk. Start this thing up.
we have what do we have on here 51,873 miles the trip meter you can see there that's that's the amount of miles I've put on this car just under a thousand miles uh, what else do we got we have the little Cadillac writing pad we have the little Cadillac calculator but that was pretty neat Cadillac pen probably doesn't work um, a new set of uncut gold uh, keys so you, you will have two sets just one uncut set this is a new gold vats number five key and then this is a new door and a trunk key we'll include that there with the calculator um, you know a little warranty booklet and then they're obviously the original owner's booklet as well uh, inside the trunk here you do have your um, trunk button hiding up there is a traction on off you can see there traction on or off uh, center console here dual ashtrays <laughs> center cigarette lighter it's funny how many ashtrays and cigarette lighters power whoa power antenna does work i can't see it with the trunk open uh climate control automatic climate control you have that nice throaty Cadillac horn, uh, auto dimming rear view mirror, push this down. You have a sunglass holder, uh, dual vanity mirrors with, looks like the labels have worn off or just dried off and flaked off. Um, dual vanity mirrors, yeah, lighted vanity mirrors. Uh, also coming with this car is a original dealer brochure for the 96 Fleetwood, which I think is pretty sweet because it gives you all that information. There is this car in dark cherry with the chrome wheels. Beautiful brome interior. Luxurious presence. This would have been the last year for these big Cadillacs. Uh, so this is just a standard Fleetwood. Now this is kind of odd. This is a standard Fleetwood here, no brome package because you can see the there's no vinyl top and there's no brome on the C-pillar. Um, but <laughs> by accident, they put the optional brome wheels on this car where the Fleetwoods were not available with these brome wheels. Uh, but you can see the difference in the interior. Obviously this is velour in this picture, but the pleating goes from side to side. Um, I just think that's kind of cool. That's a, an obvious mistake uh putting those wheels on this car because the centerfold picture shouldn't um shouldn't uh let's see what we have for options shouldn't have those wheels uh so this has the standard am fm cassette with six speakers trunk mounted 12 disc changer is optional this does not have that uh interior all your standard exterior standard uh fleetwood brome optional is your audible theft deterrent system don't know if that this car has it does have the auto fuel door lock no cell phone does have the chrome finish wheels does not have the full size spare does have the leather seating did have the solar reflective windshield now it does not uh, no sunroof no garage door opener inserted and this does not have the 7,000 pound trailer tow package uh, you can see the color selection for your interiors this is the neutral leather uh, like I said, with the wheels there, optional chrome. These are the standard brome um, alloys. And these are the standard Fleetwood wheels here, that lacy spoke wheel. Um, color number 72, Carmine in red. Uh, this car, woo. Let's see what, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, 225 inches from bumper to bumper. Wow, that is a big car. Curb weight, 4,000. 461 pounds the brome package weighs almost uh, another 10 12 pounds more than the fleetwood that's kind of weird when well, that happens all right let's take a look under the hood making this one a little too long obviously we like to look inside the trunk as well do have the uh, mini or mini donut spare that these came standard with I only have three of the original four floor mats. And I only realized this like two days ago when I had the inside of this and the outside clean, detailed, because the whole time I had it, I was driving this car with towels over the front carpets 
because that's how I bought the car. It had towels over it. So I have the driver's side. Oddly, the passenger front is missing. Two rears. This is a reflective like windshield cover. There's your spid label. Close that trunk down. Power pull down works perfectly. Jump up front here. Let's see under the hood. Beautiful, nice, clean, and presentable. Everything doing exactly what it's supposed to be. Well, I should say everything doing exactly what it should be doing. Nice and clean. Like so, common weak spot with these is these inner fender liners. They're metal. Real common to start to see rust, big blisters, and eventually rot through there. Nice and clean fenders. Uh, the valve covers, nice and clean. Both sides, you know, real, real nice. Just very minor etching in the paint there. But otherwise, real, real clean. Got that new AC Delco water pump. Also, when we did the water pump, we had to replace this. Forget what the sensor was. It's gonna come back to me, but I'll tell you all about the service we did when we get behind the wheel and start driving. Let's take her for a spin. All right, let's take it. For a spin back. I'll tell you all the things that we did to this car. I love how these cars have this light. Where is it? See, it says brake to shift. As soon as you put your foot on the brake, like they were just letting grandma know all the things she had to do to drive her new, or I don't want to say new, her, well, yeah, her new, but her last chance at getting the big body Cadillac Fleetwood ride, her, her last new opportunity at a traditional V8 Cadillac. I love that horn. Oh, we got a little bit of water here. That's all right, we'll survive. Uh, this would also be, I think, the last Cadillac that would have the front headlight monitors. Um, because, oop, reflection check. Uh, because the DeVilles, I think, carried it from the 97, 98, 99 body style in the back. Um, you can't really see it back there, but in the back. Uh, but I don't think any other car came with it on the tops of the fenders. And you can see, I don't think the headlights are on. Let me put the on. Oh, no. You can see there, you got the amber. Let's see if I can focus there. You got the headlight. And then you got the high beam. And that's on both sides. Headlight, high beam, focus, there you go. I think that's one of the coolest Cadillac features um, of these old school Cadillacs. Um, this car, like I said, this is kind of a legendary car because this was the last of the big ones. Uh, the last traditional body on frame V8. Really, Cadillac got it right by this point with the drivetrain, putting the LT1s in these cars. Because, I mean, they're not crazy horsepower monsters, but they are torque monsters. You know, you could really lay rubber with these cars. Um, if you got these cars option with the trailer tow pack, you could tow like 7,000 pounds, I think. And these cars do it with ease. I got the tow pack in my Roadmaster wagon. Um, and I don't think, I mean, you don't feel any power difference, but if you do tow with it, um, they pull, it's like basically driving a Chevy Suburban with a Cadillac Fleetwood body on it uh, because these cars can just handle it. Uh, so as far as mechanical things that we did to this car, we did a ton of mechanical stuff too. Um, she whiz. So when I bought it, um, it didn't give good heat. Uh, the guy that sold to me, he told me, he says the heat sucks in this car. It's either a blend door or the heater core. Turned out being the heater core. The heater core was clogged. We tried back flushing it, but it was just jammed. 
Uh, so we ended up just really going through the entire cooling system of this car. Um, after flushing it, the uh, water pump started leaking. So we know we had to get into that. And again, where the core was clogged, it would flush it, would drive it, it would clog back up again. I said, you know what? I'm not taking any chances. So we, like I said, went through the entire cooling system. Did a heater core. Um, that's internal in the under the dash here. Heater core, we did the radiator just because if the heater core was clogged, the radiator couldn't be that far behind. And it, it wasn't like bogged down with bars leak or anything like that. It was just, I think, old coolant that just over time just clogged it up. Uh, old Dex cool. Um, so we did a heater core, radiator, water pump, AC Delco water pump. Uh, we did the coolant recovery tank. Um, with the coolant float sensor after we did all that um, That was like the last kind of bit of it and the coolant sensor was sticking showing low coolant and it didn't really have low coolant I think it was just all gummed up uh, Thermostat uh, When we did all that we accidentally damaged the I think it was the idle control valve or It was a valve but it was I was getting a check engine light after we did all that for a vacuum leak and you could actually hear it and it turned out being just a little valve right on front of the throttle body. So we replaced that. Uh, we did front pads, rotors on this car, four tires, obviously an oil change. When we did get it, it did have, let's get this thing up on the highway here. And she gets up and moves. I mean, that's probably half throttle. We're doing 80 already. I mean, just getting up to dance. 84, 85. We're gonna top her. See if we can get up there. No, you know what? Everybody's gonna be in the comments. Oh, you're crazy. Let's see if we can get Cruz. Cruz is Cruz is engaged. Doing 87. Just smooth, no hands on the wheel. Cruising down the highway. Don't hate me in the comments. Um, the other thing that we did, like I said, we did an oil change. When we did the oil change, or when I bought the car, I should say. Um, it was leaking oil. Um, common spots where these things leak oil. Uh, it was leaking oil from the oil filter housing gasket, the oil cooler lines, and then the oil level sensor on the side of the uh, pan. Uh, so we replaced all that. We did the oil uh, filter housing gasket, AC Delco, did oil cooler lines, oil change, oil level switch, um, I know I'm missing things because we did so much work to this car. Um, I already told you about the outside stuff. What else did we do? Uh, front pads, rotors. I don't know. I think that might be it. I'm not sure. We did a lot. I really wanted to dial this car in because this car was well worth dialing in. So now she cruises, blows out hot, hot heat. Um, oh, the other thing that I had to track down, the power door locks weren't working. If you hit the door lock on this side, or on any door really, it would unlock on the driver's side, it would not unlock any of the other doors. The locks worked. After going through my factory service manual, thank God I had that, I was able to trace it down to the power door lock relay for the doors was sticking. Um, so that was fixed. So now we have working doors as well. So she's ready to go, ready to rock and roll. Any questions, give me a call, 978-930-1004. My name is Anthony. Check out the website, specialtymotorcars.net. You can see all the still pictures over there of this beautiful, big body Cadillac Fleetwood. Um, and like I always say, don't let distance stop you from getting a dream car like this in your driveway uh, because I can help arrange all the shipping right to your front door. And obviously we can't forget the price of this car. Price on this Fleetwood is gonna be $16,995. If you have any questions, give me a call, 978-930-1004. Ooh, the fare is in town. I never liked those fares. I always thought, ooh, there's a clean little hatch. Not in the Hondas, but I can appreciate a clean old car. Um, <laughs> I'm losing my train of thought. Anyways, thanks everybody for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, if you saw the original video when I bought this car, how she dialed in, how she turned out 